welcome one more. My name is Tavis, and today we are painting Hellbringer. This little make is a pretty much a testament to clan technology. It is all offense, no defense, and it is angry. And as always, we are going to be painting this in a sort of clan ghostbear inspired paint scheme. Starting off with Necromancer Cloak Grey from War Paints, as usual, because by now you should know if it's paint, it's War Paints. I have a lot of armor paints. And uh, as always, the idea here is to invoke a not specific to any galaxy ghost bear scheme because as much as I like them, they are not my favorites. I like the ghost bears, do not like their camo schemes. So, basically, base coating in gray to get this nice. Okay, first off, we primed it in gray. But again, I'm pretty sure you know that by now. It is how it is over this. Brush on priming, because I'm basic and don't have an airbrush and not like rifle cans, so I do it by brush. Anyway, applying a nice layer of uh, uh, Necromancer Cloak. And this is one, it's, it, is, it is a cold grey, meaning that it has blue undertones in, instead of green or red undertones. Actually, you can have a green undertone and still have a cold, cold grey, but this is a bluish grey. Very nice for military vehicles in general, actually. And um, to be entirely fair, it is a bit boring, but we're going to spice it up later. But as I'm pretty sure you know how base coding works this point because base coating is base coating you just slap it on fairly liberally and the only thing I'm taking care of is to not open or paint onto the places where we're painting blue later on because it makes it hard to see what heck I'm painting and this makes it hard enough for my old man eyes as is and before anyone asks no we're not gonna base it I'm pretty sure my regular viewers seeing the amount I have those know the argument by now things because of the scale. I have th seen a few things. We are, I'm testing a few things that might make it easier for me to base them properly, but for now we're leaving them unbased. Has nice textured bases that I'm going to pick up. Print out, depending on how you look at it. And I had a few printed. And uh, for some odd reason, they came out bent. I don't know, I must have messed up the settings somehow. They bent. Anyways, I couldn't use them. And I was used for this. So we're fixing, I'll fix that later. It's a later issue. Anyway. So, what can be said about the Hellbringer? Well, apart from the fact that it just, it, it's sort of called Loki also. Because it is all out offense. This thing has no proper armor. I mean, it, it's not like it's a light mech armor, but it's lightly armored for a heavy mech. It clocks in at a solid 65 tons and uh, it runs a rather ridiculous amount of weapons. The primary configuration uses an anti missile system, two extend range PPCs, one anti personnel pod. Three medium lasers, one streak launchers, and two machine guns. Yep. Yeah. So in essence, all the weapons. Not kidding, it has all the weapons. And of course there's like 2000 different var variants because let's say it's a Momnimic. Now it is loosely based on the Warhammer chassis and... Well... It is not an exact. It's, it, it's not. It's not. It's not a Warhammer Two C. But it's. It resembles it. But you know, it's. It's a dangerous mech. That's something you should be taking lightly. And 
The fun story about why it's called the Loki is Galen Cox named it Loki because it had a utterly mad configuration. It was considered completely overkill on the weapons front by Inisphere standards. And I mean, I can kind of understand that because the Inisphere makes usually designed to have a balance between offensive and defensive capabilities because Inisphere pilots like to live. Clan pilots don't always do that. It's honorable for life. A very silly way of looking at life, by the way. But if you've grown in a tank and can be replaced, it, it, you grow into that. But yeah, so it was considered overpowered weapons wise and underpowered armor wise. Which happens. Now, it is worth noting that it is sort of related to the. Oh god, my brain just stopped. Uh, never mind. It completely won. It left my mind completely. I can't. I can't even find it anymore. It's gone. It's gone. Summoner. That's the one. It's also related to the summoner, because well. If you have a functioning mech configuration, why not just tweak it a bit rather than starting all over from the start again? And of course, it's valid. It's a very angry mech. Now, would this be something that the Honorable Clan Ghost Bear would usually have? Hmm, probably not. It is more a Clan Jade Falcon thing, but I don't paint Clan Jade Falcon mechs. Because I like my cleaners to be at least remotely sane. As far as you get on that, I mean, to be entirely honest, they're never entirely sane. So, I don't know sure why I included so much of me base painting this thing. I, I thought I needed more time than I actually did, but I didn't. So yeah. Anyway. We're going with the blue now. And now, I know you're asking, but... Aren't you sitting in front of the computer right now watching the edit and recording this voiceover? And it's like, yes, yes I am. And then you ask me, so why just not cut out more of the, this part? And I'm like, I don't know. It's relaxing to watch. Just put me on mute. Boot up your favorite podcast. It's therapeutic. <laughs> I have no idea. To be honest, I just... I just do what I do. But yeah, this follows the same scheme as most others of my mechs painted in this scheme. It's basically paneling out between the grey and the blue. And I'm, I mean, I know it's not any official camera spec, but I kind of like it. And I mean, it's my mix in the end. Now, what we are going to do though, in case you're still here, we're going to get a snake preview. You see, Catalyst Game Lab just released nine boxes. I know, you shouldn't do blind boxes. But I'm a gambling man. I like to gamble. So, what I'm thinking is, we're going to pick up a case of those. That should be about nine mix. We pick one random, or two maybe. We could pick a pair, facing off against each other. We paint them up. We use some sort of randomizer to get the paint schemes. That's gonna be fun. And we do a few paint things with it. And we work our way through the nine and see what we get, just for the fun of it. Because this, this could or we can make and use all nine of them, making it entirely new, new um, mercenary company. I don't know, but I think I like the whole idea of randomizing things because it's fun. Because it's blind boxes, so you can just make all things random. That is a thing we're gonna do. In case you would like to see that, I don't know if you'd like to see that. I would like to see that, but. I can't guarantee it happens this month, because 
Last month, I had COVID. I was out for a bit over a week. I wasn't actually sick for a week, though. It took two days, three days maybe. I was back on feet again, but quarantine rules says I have to stay home. So this month, we are running a bit short on money, especially for ordering stuff from the United States to Sweden. Shipping isn't monstrously expensive, but it's still expensive. It will cost me about... Uh, 90... 100... 115... $115 to get this case shipped to me. And that's before paying for taxes and shit. So I prefer to not do that right now. Next month? Probably, if they're not sold out. If not sold out, definitely. If they're, not, if they're sold out, we're gonna have to try and track them down somewhere else. I'm not entirely sure where, but we're gonna look around. So yeah, basically, we are... ...having ideas. We also still have the dioramas to make, but I found a nice place that sells uh, industrial STLs. Um, would make for great um, scenery for a mech bay or something like that. So we're gonna pick that up too at some point. We also need new resin because I'm out of resin and should technically need a new FEP because my 3D printer's FEP is looking like dog poop because I've been using one the same from the start when I got the printer for about a year and a half ago. It has kept up surprisingly well. I have to see that. But it's starting to poop itself right now. There are scratches, there are almost holes, there are nicks, there are dings, there are places that don't get clean anymore. Also, I at one point printed with a... a um, oh, we can just see it in the corner. This catheter is printed in a chromatic silver. It's reflective. You can see on the grey, it's reflecting the light. Basically, some of that silver stuck to the FEP. And I have slight areas with slightly light, literally. And now that, that's not good for anything. So yeah, all that needs to be changed. Again, that falls on the same category as the money situation. I don't have it. So we're gonna wait for that. It's a later problem. It's a later issue. It's something we get back to when we get back to. I really need to cut this part shorter in the future. It's not that I don't like talking to your people. I like talking to you people. You should know that by now. If you somehow missed it, you know. If you know, you know. But I'm also kind of running out of things to say. And I'm pretty sure most of you are competent enough to actually base paint and make. I mean, we could technically stop here. This would be tabletop ready. You slap some silver paint on the weapons and it's good to go. But we're not going to stop there. I mean, it's a good-looking mech, but we're not going to stop there. Trust me. Oh dear lord, the camera does not focus. We're going to try and tap it, see if we can get it to focus. It doesn't focus. And tap it again, it still doesn't focus. <sighs> iPhone 10, I tell you. It is not great. We need a new one. But that also falls under the category of shit we need to find money for. So, now we're actually on to the whole painting stage which is taking ash grey and whacking it on all the upper upper, this is important not all the upper, but most of the upper edges we're gonna to try to pretend the light comes from above and not everywhere around because quite honestly if you're gonna be like that you can do you can do edge highlighting like Games Workshop do it which is not really so much edge highlighting as it is I don't know what it is. Anyway, I like my edge highlights to simulate light coming from above. So we are hitting all the edges that are exposed and going upwards. No undersides, because light won't hit as much there. Not in the same way at least, we need to differentiate that. For example, on the other side, on, on the guns, not as strong edge highlights. Same goes for blue. 
and um, actually even more important with the blue because the blue is even brighter because I like this sort of icy look to it so if you do edge highlighting try to just hit the top edges top surfaces space marines are notorious for these if you're going to do that on them you need to find the places where the armor because it's round it's basically just a lot of tubes you find the places where the armor is facing upward and you brighten that up keep the undersides darker looks great fantastic also between the base coating and this stage i did paint the feet because again i'm pretty sure you know how to paint silver over a piece of mech but it's worth pointing out that what i did also is take after the base coat before it's fully dried i added a bit of um, dark tone no strong tone to it to make it a bit more um, platinum-esque a bit darker and then apply that to the bottom of the feet and then apply next a dash of um, strong tone to um, the metal what it's drying to give it a sense of warmness because again it's a policy of mine i don't paint my mix feet in color because i consider it to be a waste in reality that would get worn off anyway but you can see here we have hit just hitting the upper sides the places where light would hit naturally i mean it is a nice one it is it, it, it's getting there and we are using ice something i can't remember the name of it icy mist ice storm is the paint mixed with the uh, um, uh, wolf gray bluish gray that i'm using for the blue which is a nice mix and that also got got, got a touch of the gray in it just make it because here's why i usually don't put a paint recommendation because i mix paints all the time rarely something remains the same tone for long but yeah we hit all the edges just carefully and then we paint the weapons and as i said this has a lot of weapons two ppcs in the arms it has machine guns on one side lasers on the other side in the torso it has the anti-missile system on top and it has a missile system and it has some sort of other missiles it, it has weapons everywhere but yeah a nice weather down silver just to keep this sort of clean look that i try to keep from my make my clan mix. i want them to look more pristine than in, in the sphere ones because in the sphere ones are supposed to be dirty 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 so yeah that's a hell bringer for you i'm not entirely sure if you found this in any way informative or entertaining but if you do hit the like button subscribe if you want to see more content like this we're gonna do more mech content we're gonna do some kill team content we're gonna do things we do things yeah we're just gonna touch up the, the cockpit window and um, that we use a mix of uh, camo camouflage green and or caustic something i think it's a very aggressive bright yellow that you see on the lights too i don't know if the lights in my mind there's the lights the lights now so yeah that is pretty much it we are coming up on the uh, beauty shot time so until next time stay safe be kind and do play fair bye